Hi, I'm Andy Obermiller, editor of Government Driven Investing. Today, I'd like to talk with you for a few moments about energy. 40% of the CO2 emissions in this country come from cars, and so automobiles must be a vital part of our environmental agenda. So we've got to do something, right? Wrong. The something has already been done. The law was signed in 2007 and just went into effect six months ago, on January 1st. Now, this is one Bush-era law that President Obama actually likes, and he should. This federal action set an aggressive timetable for the increased use of biofuel. Now for most people, biofuel means ethanol, and it's an old story. And maybe not a good one, because even with massive federal support like subsidies and tariffs, ethanol nearly died last year when the price of corn shot to $8 a bushel. Now ethanol, like all of agriculture, is a high volume, low margin business, and this price spike put many operators out of business. A few are still operating in bankruptcy, but only the strongest companies were able to survive intact. At present, the nation can produce about 10 million gallons of ethanol every year. Current federal law caps that output at 15 billion gallons in 2015. That's just six years away. After that, there's really not going to be any growth for corn-based ethanol unless we export it. And we can say that under the current federal law, there's somewhere around 50% growth possible for the domestic ethanol market. Now that's not exactly terrible upside. I know a lot of companies that would love to see 50% growth in their business written in the federal law, but that's peanuts compared to what else is on that timetable. The key is not to look at ethanol, which admittedly has its drawbacks, but to look at what's known as advanced biofuels. Now, these are renewable fuels that have been shown to be 50% cleaner than conventional gasoline. The biofuels timetable, which calls for 36 billion gallons of biofuel overall by 2022, requires the nation to use 21 billion gallons of advanced biofuel by then, and 16 billion gallons of it must come from cellulose. Cellulose is the most abundant organic compound on Earth. It's present in all plant life, and because it's sugar-based, it can be fermented into alcohol. It's a lot more efficient to derive ethanol from cellulose than it is from corn. An acre of corn will yield 150 bushels, on average, which translates into about 405 gallons of ethanol. But switchgrass, for example, another crop that shows immense biofuel potential, yields 250 gallons per ton. And just one acre can yield up to 10 tons of switchgrass, which means it wins the ethanol derby by, 200, by 2,500 gallons to 405. And the best part is that switchgrass uses less water, is naturally resistant to pests, and can grow anywhere. Corn uses tons of water and fertilizer and must be grown on the nation's best farm ground. There's just one problem. Cellulose-based ethanol, even though everyone knows it's the inevitable future, isn't being produced on a broad scale. The technology is well understood, but it's still being developed. Despite that, though, the federal timetable still calls for cellulose ethanol production of 16 million gallons a year by 2022. As a nation, we have about a dozen years to affect a 15,900% growth in the production of this critical biofuel. And remember, I'm not just making a prediction here. I'm not telling you what I'd like to see or what the Sierra Club or Greenpeace is trying to lobby Congress for. I'm simply reporting what the federal law already requires. So when it comes to biofuel, you can invest in conventional ethanol with its modest 50% upside, where you can cast your lot with cellulose ethanol, which has a mandated growth rate that's so high it almost seems nonsensical. If you were to invest $10,000 and achieve a growth rate of 15,900%, you'd be sitting on $1.6 million. Now, do I really think that's likely? I absolutely do. Warren Buffett's annual report this year showed that he's added 360,000% to Berkshire Hathaway's book value since he took over in 1964. That's an impressive run. It took him 45 years. We're looking for just 15,900% growth in 12 years. And it's not just possible, it's the law. Remember, the only thing stronger in the financial world than Warren Buffett is the U.S. government. I've laid out the case for oxyfuel technology and cellulose ethanol in the current issue of Government Driven Investing. If you're a subscriber, you can read these articles and see the latest portfolio editions, which are the leading companies in these emerging energy technologies. 
If you're not a subscriber, you can find out how to access this vital information at streetauthority.com. I'm Andy Obermiller. Thanks for watching and many happy returns.